It's been a difficult year. These numbers are slightly ahead of expectations, but frankly, they demonstrate the need for urgent change in Marks and Spencer. We've got some top line growth, but our like for like sales in both food and clothing and home were down. And although our web sales grew by 5%, we're behind the market. And we need to change this business urgently. How worried are you that the decline in like for like sales growth accelerated during the year? Well, I think there are two different things. First of all, we, we saw uh, a difference in Q4 because of uh, the snow in our clothing and home business. But what we have seen in food is, is disappointing performance. We uh, have been very good at events. We, we were up 7% at Christmas. But in the core shopping periods, we've been behind the market. And that's not good enough. That's something we're addressing urgently. So what's the reason for that? I mean, food until relatively recently has been the area in which M&S has absolutely excelled. Well, back to when you were running, in fact. Yeah, well, we've got a fantastic business. Let's be clear. It's a great business. We've got great products. And the innovation in our business is fantastic. I think what we've had over the last 18 months are some execution issues, largely around price, availability, and ranging. Now, these are things that are in our control. And the managing director of food, who's just arrived, Stuart Making, has got them firmly in his sights. What about clothing? Now, there's a suggestion in, uh, in the statement that you've lost market share in certain demographics, for example, young families. Why do you think that is? Well, over a period of time, if you, if you look at a longer period of time, Marks and Spencer has lost customers in total. And some of those have come from a younger demographic. Frankly, at the moment, it's stabilized. And in women's wear, for the first time in seven years, we actually grew our customers, and most of them were from a younger demographic. We've done that by focusing on the pillars of our business, things that are really important to our customers. Kids wear, school wear, lingerie, bras, suits, all of which attract young families who join M&S as a brand and then start to shop the rest of the range. Was there too much of an emphasis on high-end upmarket women's fashion in the recent past? Well, I think we changed that, but yes, I would agree. We were probably a little bit too focused on best, a little bit too focused on a more fashionable touch. What our customers tell us they want a fantastic wardrobe essentials and products with contemporary wearable style. Now you've just announced another series of store closures. It almost feels like death by a thousand cuts here. You've had three separate announcements of uh, stores that you've earmarked for closure. Wouldn't it have been better to have got it all out of the way in one go? Well, we can't do that, Ian, because what we've had to do is look at this forensically on a store-by-store -store basis. We've got to make sure we do the right thing by the town, the right thing by our customers, and most importantly, the right thing by our colleagues. And we need to make sure that we're taking advantage of the optimal times to change leases or ownership structures or indeed take planning permission. So this really does have to be done in chunks. Um, we've just announced 14 more closures yesterday. Uh, uh, we thought about those very carefully. Uh, uh, but we are, by the end of the year, sort of halfway through that transition program. And um, as I said, we intend to close 100 over the next two to three years. Uh, uh, and it's the right thing to do to reflect customer shopping habits. Is that it, though, in terms of store closures? Are there going to be further announcements down the line? Well, I mean, as we see it today, it's 100 stores is about the right number. But one of the things I want to do is make sure that M&S doesn't fall into the trap it's previously fall, fell into, of not modernising its state and not responding to customers' needs on an ongoing basis. Uh, and we will continue to modernise the estate. I want it to be fit for the future. Even after these store closures, something like 200 combined food and clothing of home outlets, isn't that too much for a business that wants a third of all of its sales to be online by 2022? Well, we've calculated this very carefully. We, bought, we, we looked at an external model which looks at customer shopping habits, it looks at locations and populations. And as we see it today, we think that the business will be a third online and that 220 stores will provide a better shopping experience for customers than they have today. Slightly bigger, uh, slightly broader ranges uh, and in the locations that customers want to shop. And what about the outlook for consumer spending generally? We've had some fairly benign inflation figures today. Wages growth is now outstripping inflation for the first time in more than a year. Are you optimistic there's going to be any kind of recovery in consumer spending? Well, it's difficult to see at the moment. We see the customer is fragile. We see um, uh, almost a recessionary behaviour, if I'm honest, about um, uh, clothing purchase particularly. Um, and I think there are still many, many uncertainties. You know, interest rates are still uncertainty. Petrol prices continue to rise. And of course, there is still a fear in the market about what will happen as a result of Brexit. So uh, we think there'll be a caution in the market for some time to come. If you look back at results day statements over the last couple of decades, a succession of CEOs have talked about either transforming the business or accelerating the pace of change. You've used both those expressions in your statement today. What's different this time? Well, I think the first thing I want to say is uh, I'm not going to call it until we've done it. 
and, and you'll judge me on that, and I'm happy that you judge me on that. But what I do see inside the business is, is a recognition that we must change. We must change for the future if we want to be, you know, uh, an MS special again with sustainable, profitable growth. So when you have that recognition inside the business, you see a pace that perhaps we haven't seen for some time. You've cautioned today that growth is going to be flat in food and slightly lower again in clothing at home. Yes. When do you expect or hope to return to like-for-like -like sales growth in both? Well, first of all, we have got the impact of the store closures in the program uh, next year, which will be important, and that's also in the following year. But we've got a lot of work to do to get the business in the right shape. Um, I believe that's going to take us two to three years. And again, this is part of a three to five year transformation program. So you know, top line growth will come, but at the moment we've got to be focused on doing the right thing to reshape the business.